Hello there, my crypto bit brothers and sisters. This here is Bulldog Rod, and I got with me my favorite guy, Papa Ron. Hello, Rod. <laughs> What's happening, brother? Folks, how are you? Uh, I think everybody's doing good today, man. Bitcoin went up a little bit. So uh, it was down to 13 when I woke up this morning. Now it's up to 14, barely. <laughs> Yeah. Well, when Bitcoin uh, jumps 5%, that could be a little bit of money. Yes, it is. You know? Yeah. Hey, hey, did you look at that freaking Neo? I've Man. been watching that for a couple days. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. You know, it's only, only done a whole bunch. Of the, you know, we're looking before we got on the air. Uh, just uh, about a month ago, it was like 34 what, 34 bucks, and now it's up to $190? <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it's something else with the growth it's had. And there hasn't been a lot of big dips either. Now, look no, at this, Rod. Yes, and, and, I'm looking. And, and I'm not a chart guy, but look at just today, the volume over here that's been pouring into this thing. I know. I mean, is that an indication that it still might go up the next day or two? I mean... I don't know. I need to ask either Mr. Node or Trader yeah. Boss. <laughs> Trader Boss. We had, we had to call uh, Mr. Node. Yeah. And we don't say Trader Boss lightly like we're not impressed with him, but just no. uh, we haven't associated with him at all. Um, no. The Node Investor is who's been in yeah, our yeah. corner. But anyway, yeah, Neo's doing great, Rod. Yeah, it is doing good. Well, I think we ought to get on, man. There's some exciting news coming out of Canada. I tell you what, that dadgum Kentucky Fried Chicken now is taking Bitcoin. Yeah, baby. Can you believe, Can you believe that? <laughs> man, a big chain like KFC, man. And, hey, and <laughs> let me interrupt yeah. you. Let me interrupt you, folks. We, uh, Rod and I were together in, and I don't know if you've heard of Ben Franklin uh, Variety Stores. But Rod and I used to be in the uh, retail business, and we had some Ben Franklin's and some variety stores, and we had about five or six of them around the state of Utah. <laughs> and when we'd go to uh, Richfield, and we had a store there, man, our main stop was KFC, baby. We'd That's go over right. there and <laughs> eat till we were sick almost. <laughs> but uh, well, I was about the, uh, I can't say it's the only restaurant, but it was... Wasn't very many restaurants there at that time, and no, KFC was then. one of them. So, yeah, now now I see they got a lot more. But and now yeah, Bitcoin I, for them. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, I, it's Canada, but you know it'll start there, and if it goes well, then they'll bring it on down here, probably nationwide or worldwide. That'd be awesome. It just shows you two things for me. One, it shows you that that crypto is still progressing. The awareness is getting out there. I mean, Subway Sandwich also takes it, folks. You'll never probably see it advertised in there, but Subway Sandwich claims they take Bitcoin. So the awareness factor is big. The second point that it makes to me is that when when Kentucky Fried Chicken, and what does it say here? They immediately sells out or something. Yeah, the whole bucket of chicken sells out immediately. But so what, I think people want to buy the big bucket for Bitcoin. Cash. In Bitcoin. But if people get frustrated and the retail establishments get frustrated with the length of time to do the transaction or the swap of, you know, like the fees are too high to buy a bucket of chicken so people get discouraged, it'll either make Bitcoin get off their fannies and straighten this stuff around. Um, and I know they're working on Lightning Project and... Yeah, and a few things like that, but it'll either force them to get, you know, up to speed with being used as a currency, or somebody else will take it over, like Dash or Litecoin or yeah. Bitcoin Cash. Somebody will. So, yep, they will. Some good things can really come out of this for everybody. Yeah, I was excited to see that. Though. Yeah, I think it's cool too. Now, here's one for you, Rod. And folks, we're just going to go over some of these news articles real quick. We just like to kind of things that strike interesting to us. Uh, but here, this guy went and he tried to buy a dollar's worth of Bitcoin at a Las Vegas ATM. 
and he just did it to prove how far Bitcoin is from replacing regular money, like like it was a pain to do. Buddy, buddy, whoever you are, and and his name is uh, Matt Wing. He wrote the article, but you're buying a dollar of an item that's worth fifteen thousand dollars. I mean, <laughs> my help. <laughs> you know, what are you gonna do with a damn buck? You know, buy a Snicker bar. I'll bet you can't even buy a Snicker bar in Vegas yeah. for a buck. <laughs> no, um, <probably. laughs> get a freaking life. What do you mean that? Uh, <laughs> That this just proves that Bitcoin will never be a currency. It don't prove jack, you know what? Um, sorry, Rod. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, brother. Yeah. I'm laughing at him too. When I saw this, I said, "Say what? I mean, a dollar? Put, put well, a hundred bucks in that machine or something, and then go, you know you can." S- anyway, screw them. And the next one we're going to talk about is that Arizona residents. They could be uh, start paying state taxes with that? Bitcoin. Oh, I, I miss that one. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I was excited about that one too because if the Arizona starts, of course, Arizona, Arizona kind of does some stuff that's uh, considered, I guess, far left or far right. But uh, you know, I don't care, man. I think it's I think it's cool. They got it. That that's going to be awesome. Go in there and pay your taxes in Bitcoin. That well, would be cool. We know back in April that Japan made it a national currency, Bitcoin. And you can go to any government office in Japan and pay taxes or licenses or anything else. And and I'm with you, Rod. Now to see some of this come to the States, um, it's, it's kind of refreshing. It's the start. Again, it's becoming mainstream. And it folks, is. we're just still at the cusp of this thing. Wait till it gets into high gear. What do they call that one? It's just the very beginning. People are starting to see it. You said it earlier. The adoption stage? Yeah, we're in the adoption stage. That's right. (laughs) I love that term. Or the accumulating (laughs) stage for us. I mean, we're trying to get hold of enough coins because I don't care what that coin market cap says. It can show red for a month. I don't care. Sooner or later, that baby is going to go ultraviolet, I mean, ultra fluorescent green. It's going to go up so freaking high that... Uh, I can't it, wait to go to bed one night and it's 13000 and then wake up the next morning and it's twenty five. Yeah, <laughs> so... And here's another one of our favorite guys, and that's this uh, Steven Mnuchin over at yeah. the uh, Treasury Secretary under Trump. How he got put in, <laughs> I'm not so sure, but... Uh, this is a stupid statement. Well, sir, this comes out of <laughs> SH. TFplan.com. And this this website, folks, um, Rod and I have been not following this website, but we, we review their articles at times. And they're kind of a preparedness outfit. They're, they don't have a lot of faith. The, the, the main writer for this, good guy, he's got some great articles, but you know they kind of propose that we're coming into an economic collapse and there's going to be hardships along the way. So this article was on that, on that website. Um, and it's Steven Mnuchin, and he made the comment, we want to make sure bad people can't use Bitcoin to do bad things. I found that the funniest art thing I think I ever heard of in my life. What do you think they do with fiat money, man? <laughs> yeah. I cracked up, man. Uh, here, Here's government. Trying to protect us. <laughs> well, yeah, and and they're they do more. Be- we are a country that has been in war for the last I don't know two hundred years. I mean, we are a warring country, and yeah. and we're we're in Afghanistan protecting. I'm, I'm not going to get sidetracked here, but yeah, I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of bad things going on in our government, and now they want to step up and say, "Bitcoin, we we got to watch this. We got to regulate it, and and uh, yeah. we are the do-gooders, and we know what's going to be good for everybody." It just it just drives you nuts. <laughs> anyway, and we recently had a conversation, Rod, right, about this um, Novigrats. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember he, was he start launching some kind of a hedge fund or something. That's like right. That. He was going to. Get two hundred million dollars, launch a hedge fund with cryptos. Evidently, he's abandoned that project, 
And uh, now he wants to launch a cryptocurrency merchant bank. So he gets yeah. out to raise $200 million to do this venture. And I don't know what happened to the other one. The article really didn't say why he backed out or maybe he couldn't get anybody to donate the $200 million. So he said, well, let's spin this into a merchant bank. Maybe they'll donate now. And catch this. he was. This is the same guy. This is the same guy, Rod, that... Um, that third paragraph down right there. Got there. There you got it. Right there. Um, Nova Gas last year described a surge in Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, and other cryptocurrencies as the biggest bubble in our lifetimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, 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 the blockchain will reshape finance the way the internet did did uh, communication. That's true. So he's done an about face. He's he on has. Bitcoin right now, I guess. Well, <laughs> at least the blockchain. He he thinks the blockchain technology is good, but the coins and stuff is a big bubble. Yeah, now he wants to open a merchant bank for that bubbled yeah. coin. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, here's wow. an article for you. Last day, people. Um, oh, yeah, here it looks like 666. <laughs> that's right. This is out of the trusted reviews. This microchip Bitcoin wallet is all kinds of creepy and very possible the future. And we've known for the last year or so that, that there's been programs to try to get microchips put into our hands like that and so on to keep track of... Um, you know our personal data and medical records and even your your bank account through like a chip that you can use similar to a visa <laughs> but uh you know yeah, i think I that stuff <laughs> i think okay. that technology is coming rod yeah um, okay can, can you see this little chip in your hand and you, you're walking through the airport and they pull you over hey buddy come over here and let's talk a minute and you and you say where'd you get that million dollars of bitcoin at <laughs> <laughs> That is an excellent point. <laughs> you know, it's more more control, more data on us that they want to know. Have you paid taxes on that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, anytime you walk uh, through a scanner, it could pick up what you're carrying on your wallet. And, absolutely. Uh, you know your whole life history, everything, man. Now the next thing we'll see is these. You know how many guns you got registered and bought? In the past lifetime, you know, I mean, I can, that's scary for me, man. Yeah. It's government know. control. That's what Absolutely. they want. Yes, sir. That'd be terrible. Well, folks, we actually uh, wanted to focus a little bit, and we know we had some fun news articles there, but there's a new wallet out. Um, it's an app that you can put on your phone, and it's called the Kryptonator. It just kind of, for us, it just kind of came in the limelight yesterday and i don't know it, it's probably been out a little while because it is up and running i think um and it's well, uh, 2014 right well they've been working on the project maybe since then well, but they had that guy in bitcoin talk remember he said he got on it and he had oh that's right okay a few little negative things to say but you know that was when it was just starting i mean it's two years later yeah I think it may be pretty good. You never know. Well, they say now they have 700,000 active accounts, oh, 20 million it. processed transactions. Wow. Here's the difference in this app, folks. Of course, it's free to get on and download. It's out of the Google Play Store if you want it. Um, but I think you can do automated, automatic exchanges within your app, wow. your wallet, so you can change that Bitcoin over, I think, to even U.S. dollars or to yep. Litecoin. It's kind of like a shapeshift deal. Now, like Exodus Wallet, Exodus Wallet actually sends those coins offline to shapeshift to make the transaction, then they come back to your wallet. How this app works, I haven't read anything that explains the process, if they have a shapeshift within the app or not. Um, but you can actually buy right from there. I mean, you can carry your whole thing. And, and they don't have all the coins yet. They've got uh, some good pairs that they're working on. Um, it talks about you can do it on your laptop, desktop, mobile wallet, um, instant yeah, currency that's, exchange. That's, Go ahead, Rod. I think it's kind of cool, you know, the way I, I downloaded it on my phone. Um, 
and it that I haven't exchanged anything yet because I just signed up right before we got on. <laughs> okay. But it does work good. And Rod hit it on the head there. We we have read a couple negative comments, so do, do your research, you know. Don't yeah. trust us that it's a sound platform and project. We, we're not sure. But we thought it was kind of cool, too. They're dealing in Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dash, Zcash, and a few others. Um anonymous and secure and the other big thing rod that they state is there is no fees involved yeah there is a going rate and they've got uh they got a merchant program if you come back up at the top here's some of their services here you can read about the wallet their merchant tools um the exchange rates that they're claiming offering um anyway it's it's kind of a it's kind of a cool deal and and folks i think we're just again on the cusp also of seeing yeah. so many different platforms and applications for crypto coming our way um and i think i think more and more wallets will be available for for uh multiple coins like like we have here you know yeah, uh, I think there one day. I think there's going to be a wallet that'll even take care of ICOs. As soon as they get on an exchange, they'll be automatically added to a wallet. So yeah, everybody will just have to have one wallet. That'll be nice. Well, sure. And Litecoin's been playing around with those atomic swaps, so you don't even yep. go to a middleman. It's all wallet to wallet. Yeah. Uh, Pillar, Pillar's working on some huge things. I keep hearing about them, and so. Yeah, the technology is just growing like crazy, and it so is. we're in for some very cool things. It might not be next month, but um, things like this Kryptonator, it's kind of just the start. It's but I believe so. So, well, check it out. Read up on it before you take it, if you'd like, and uh, it's about yeah. all we have, Rod. I tell you, it was kind of fun. That news stuff, we had a good bunch of good laughs, at least for me, I did. And, and be sure to give us some thumbs up, folks, and, and God bless.